Okay, pencils. What I would first recommend you do um, in terms of pencils is go out and buy a multi-purpose kit. Now, I know this is DeWent again. I'm not suggesting everything you buy has to be DeWent. But what is in this set is not only some sketching pencils, but there's also some pastel pencils that I showed you in the pastel stage. There's some drawing pencils. There is charcoal pencils, and I love charcoal, so I'll talk a little bit about that in this section, even though it's not pencil technically. Um, some graphic pencils, some compressed charcoal, and some natural graphite, as well as that water-soluble pencil that I showed you earlier on. This is the set that I've got that pencil in. This is really cost effective. I mean, you can tell I've taken bits out of it and it's a bit grungy looking. But it is a really fantastic set because this is not only a starter set, but it's a set that I go to time and time again when I don't think I, I would use it necessarily. So, um, let me talk a little bit about the graphite. It's great for fi uh, covering larger areas together, obviously. That's what... Um, the graphite is, it's just not um, leaded in a stick, in a stick form, but you also do have different um, grades, so you've got HB, 8B and 4B in here, and then you've got some harder ones, some charcoal pencils if you don't like the mess, but what compressed charcoal is, because I once did a blog post and um, my followers said that they didn't like charcoal because they didn't like the way it looked when I was showing them some charcoal drawings that I did and I love charcoal, this kind of charcoal I do love willow charcoal but some people don't like the feel of it, they don't like the mess that it creates compressed charcoal is the answer It is but what it says, it's squished um, charcoal so that it's so compact that there is, look there is no mess on my hands, this is charcoal so this is the answer if you don't like charcoal, and I know charcoal is something that people think is uh, for school children to use, but you can get really beautiful pages just with a stick of charcoal. I mean, I absolutely love charcoal, I'm not going to lie. Um, and I think that if you um, do have that, you know, preconception about charcoal, just to get yourself a stick and just have a go, because you might realize like me that there is such freedom in it it's cheap and it's just willing it's a willing material um so anyway enough on charcoal i love it but that's enough on charcoal so <laughs> what i would recommend is going out and buying a multi-purpose kit with water soluble some graphite sticks some charcoal sticks this has some pastels in it and some colored pencils as well as the graded uh sketching set so I definitely recommend going out and buying a multi-purpose one. Now what I have here is just cut pencils for colour. And this is the same brand as what the famous um, art journaling water-soluble pastels um, is. Karan de Nash, I think is how you pronounce it all. Anyway, they are okay, is my verdict on these. They're not the best, and they're not the worst by any means. They are, they are not a bad quality. Um, but for me, the only brand of pencil I will ever want to use, so far I may find something else, but it's Prismacolor pencils. So these pencils, you may have heard quite a bit about already. Um, they are super, super smooth pencils to use. Um, these aren't all of them that I have. These are the, the ones that I just had out of here because... I just wanted to show you a few, but they are great for skin tones. This is an old kind, the Verti Thin, I don't know, um, but I wouldn't recommend this one necessarily. It's more the ones that come in the round, the round ones. This one to me was a little bit harder, so I was grateful I only bought one pencil of that. Um, but altogether, I love these pencils. I adore these pencils, and these for not wetting a pencil will beat um, any other brand for me, including DeWent, which, you know, I absolutely adore, as I have said. Um, and what I would also recommend is getting a colourless pencil to blend. <laughs>
Okay, pens and markers, the wonderful world. <laughs> there is going to be a little bit of a minefield for you right now, I admit. I didn't realise I had so many pens and markers, to be honest. This is my pen drawer here. And what I've done is I've just took a few out of each just to give you an idea of the kind of different brands I have and what I will use them for. First of all, go to markers because they're the majority here. Um, I love pro markers and the reason I love pro markers is because they go onto the page and as they go on the alcohol evaporates so that the colour just builds and builds and builds and you can layer it as much as you want. You can just keep going if you want, making it darker and darker and darker and darker. Um, and what you can also have is a blender like this where you can mix two colours together and make them a little bit more unified. Um, I'm not very proficient with mixing colours with pro markers like I'm not with pencils and this is probably the reason why I haven't gone and bought any Copic markers yet because they are a lot more expensive uh, for one per per pen they are a hell of a lot more expensive um, but also at the moment I'm just happy I go to these markers quite a bit but I don't go to them enough to justify getting some Copics yet. I probably will at some point in the future. But I want to be proficient enough with these first of all. So I do have a huge collection of Pro Markers. There is probably about 50 in this drawer. The other kind of markers that I will go for are these Marvilla Plume ones that are again the rum a permanent alcohol marker. But what they have is this beautiful kind of brush tip which feels like you're using a paint, uh, paintbrush. They are lovely and again you can saturate the colour as much as you want and it won't rake the page, tear the paper. And what that's really good for for me is for using on my vintage ephemera some of my very very old book pages that if I was to use something that was too heavy or that would um, bleed through, to, I mean these do bleed through to the side but if it was to saturate and not evaporate um, you know, if it's a water-based pen, it would tear the paper. So those are my two alcohol um, pens that I love to use, the actual markers. As for other markers, Sharpies are fantastic, obviously. Um, just get a, a variety of colours, and also the metallic ones are pretty cool as well. They do look like any other metallic pens that I have brought, so I would recommend the Sharpie in the metallic then um probably go to these the paint markers um i've just bought um quite a few more markers in the paint markers and i think they are um zig zigo paint markers that i've brought and they are pretty good they really are these ones are pearlescent and they really are quite good for art journal pages because they give you the look of paint basically but the quickness um, and the ease of using a pen, which I'm not always so confident with writing with a paintbrush. I'm just not very good at it. Next, what I have is some Zig um, markers, which are known for being calligraphy pens, and they are really good. I'm not yet had time to learn any calligraphy, but it's always been on my list. But they have these huge um, pot pens with the chiselled chiselled edge tips which are really cool and then a smaller one for when you're writing small style so it automatically goes larger and smaller for you um, then some metallic ones and also what they have is the writer ones with a rounded a nice rounded tip which are also really really look at this flowing they're just beautiful so those then also um, I have a lot of the Secura, is that how you say them? The Jelly Roll pens, the Glaze pens or the Souffle pens. Um, I have some of the Shadow pens which I haven't picked out here. But you know what I'm talking about this brand. There is um, a lot of different variations and what they are is just a really nice gel pen. But they are a gel pen that flows and these ones, the Jelly Roll a really quite dense colour so you can see quite thick and I mean if you go to the again there is going to be stuff on my mat that they might not go over 
um, which is always going to be the case. Um, there, you know, if you've got lots of layers, of kind of like oil pastel things, they might not go over that, but they are going to work. Whereas a gel pen bought out of the supermarket or a kids section of a stationery might not. Then there's um, these speciality kind of crafting things. These are a twinkler. I'm going quick, sorry, because I've only got a couple of minutes left on my timer, so I've got to go quick on this section. These are called twinkler, and they are basically got this really nice little shimmer going off in the actual pen, and they're really good coverage too. Um, then what I have is these just out of the stationery store. They're the Stablio 0.88. I really like these pens because they're really nice writing pens. And if you want a bit where you journal, then they are really nice tips. So I like these pens for that. But again, I have just bought some Zig pens that have really fine point nibs again. So I'm open that these might not be the best one for everybody. People like, um, well, I'm forgetting the brand because I'm under pressure. Um, oh, I've forgotten it. Anyway, white pens, um, paint markers. A white pen is pretty much essential for an art journalist toolkit. This one is um, a, a, like a paint marker, like a whiteout pen, but it's um, got paint in it. And this one is the one that I would usually go to, the Uni Posca. And then also the Secura Glaze. Again, you want the one that's 850 for it. It will go down and you won't be able to see it, but in a couple of minutes, once that's dry, it will then become really dense white colour, bright white. So a white pen is definitely an investment for an art journalist kit. Okay, what I also wanted to talk about in this section before my memory conked out was inks. Um, I am personally not that um, brave, I guess is the word, to draw with inks without having pencil lines down first um, but it's definitely an area that I want to get better at. Now what you will first need is some kind of drawing instrument for the inks. This is one of the pens that is um, a dialer thing. It's a wheel and it's got numbers on it as to how thick you want your lines. Basically, you will dip this into your ink, and the more space between the two ends, the more ink will get trapped, and the thicker the lines will be, or the slimmer the lines will be. I like using this for a calligraphy type um, period regency kind of looking letter that you might want to write, just like um, with a fountain pen. This is also a dip pen, not a fountain pen. But again, if you didn't want to use this and you just wanted it for writing, then um, a fountain pen would be absolutely fine for this. What I have here is some Dr. Martin's um, Bombay ink, which has a nozzle on it, which is quite useful for things I'm going to show you in a little, a little while, but it's also just good for making splodges on your pages. You know, you can make that, then you can close your books together, pull it apart, you've got um, some movement already on your page, which some people have seen, then draw images into those splatters or pick something out of them. Or you can just have it as a background, and that works fine too. What I have here is some Winslow & Newton, which are another favourite brand of mine, um, drawing inks, which come in cute little bottles that look great if I had enough room on my desk just to stick them out of the bottles that they are um, which are definitely for dipping um, as opposed to pouring um, but they come with eight colours in and they are really really nice quality these are a little bit thinner as opposed to this kind of like really really quite dense kind of looking colour that the um, Bombay inks have. These are a lot more translucent, more like what you expect ink to be in a fountain pen. Imagine the fountain pen, um, oh, I've forgotten what they're called, the inserts, the ink bullets. That's the kind of ink that these are. They are very nice. And then also, um, you can get inks in forms of these walnut inks, 
these sprays which will lead us nicely into our section on sprays but if you have these do expect them to go everywhere because they are <laughs> I've never known a spray like it honestly they do kind of get everywhere but again they are really really good um, place to start for distressing pages for having a grungy look to your pages that's what these walnut inks are good for they're called antiquing solutions so that will probably be why <laughs> okay so let's go on to the sprays <laughs> Okay, sprays and shimmers. I'm kind of um, clumping in Perfect Pearls and other microbrace products into this section because that's what a lot of sprays are based on and how you can easily make your own. So there's obviously the shop bought ones um, that you can go out and buy. The Anurand, Anurand, and oh, you know what I'm talking about. The <laughs> Anurandak ones are. Um, they are phenomenal. They are really um, great colour down, but then what they also are is water soluble. When you put something else on top, they become like a really, really deep colour. Um, the I've got a cosmic sh shimmer here and a glimmer mist. They are um, pretty okay, but as I'll probably say in the video, to how to save uh, money on your journal supplies, as you can see, this is just. Oops, sorry for that flash. This is just a whole load of mica powder that has been put in with a bit of colour, you know, so it's not hard to make your own and you can make your own without any colour in at all, just have some shimmer on there. It's up to you. So what I would recommend is going out and buying some kind of misters. Now I've got quite a few different kinds. I've got some that are supermarket brought, shop brought, and I would definitely recommend going and getting the Ranger Mini Misters because they are more evenly dispersed. They are a better quality um, spray. You have to fill them up a lot quicker because they are mini. That's the point of them. So they do run out quicker and you have to make them up fresh. But what I put in mind is acrylic paint mixed with water. And I'm not sure that's the best thing for them. Um, I think if I had liquid watercolour, I might use liquid watercolour instead because the acrylic I think could clog um, the sprays but at the same time I want to spray because I use it for layering thick colour I want the um, the density that acrylic paint gives as opposed to watercolour because if I put watercolour on top of watercolour it might not give so much as an effect as what acrylic will so I'll probably just put a tiny scoop of acrylic into each one probably one tenth um, acrylic paint to water and you don't fill them up all of the way fill them up to about there so that you can properly mix them and ensure that all of the paint is dispersed into the water then what I have is these ones which came in a set again from Imagination Crafts which I think is a British brand with these um, mag powders and what I did was put the ink in so I put ink I don't know if you can see this is with the um, Bombay ink red and then I put some copper in there and it becomes really coppery it's awesome spray that one and then just some other inks now I used the magenta out of my Winsor & Newton to create this one and I wouldn't recommend it when I was showing you the the ones with the decanter I would definitely re recommend using that because these splash everywhere when you try and pull them out of these um, Unless you have a little funnel, but I didn't, so they were quite messy. And I'll just put a little bit in there. 
what I did with this one is it's very very um, metallic -y, this one and the reason is because I put in metallic paint um, which actually is going to lead us into our next section which is speciality paints. Okay, what I also wanted to talk about in this section of shimmers quickly is just using shimmery pearlescent paints or glues or glitter glues and basically they're quite a good stable for art journals um, to be honest. These kind of things that have the point are great fine liners just for, this one would be clogged wouldn't it, just for getting out cool shapes basically like an outliner with a glass paint is actually a glass paint which actually I can use in anything and again happens to be clogged it's been a while since I've used some of these these ones are um, really cheap they're about um, one pound maybe one pound fifty and they're kind of a, and a pearlescent glue and they still dry like a paint so what I particularly love using for these ones is grabbing a palette knife I can see one. Just grabbing a palette knife, grabbing a stencil, and then just putting a dollop onto the palette knife and scraping it across the stencil. paints what I mean by speciality paints um, basically is just something that gives you a particular effect that's it and what I have here first of all is some crackle paints now there's a couple of brands that are on the market what I have here is Croco which is the Viva Decor and this is a really really thick I mean look at that it's a really thick paint that I put on with a palette knife um, also what you have is the Tim Holtz Distress um, crackle paints as well um, so it's up to you what kind of brands you go for they all kind of do the same thing they are all really thick and they all produce um, a cracking effect that you can't really I can't judge it anyway if it's going to give you small cracks or if it's going to give you larger cracks um, I think with the croco if you do it a little bit thinner then you get um, less cracks going so on. What I have here is Viva Decor metal paints. Now I like metal paints. You can make your own with mica but it's more of a shimmer than it is metallic. What also you can have is, um, I've shown this for the bead, how to make beads from aluminium foil. This quite feature quite a bit in that. These um, dabbers in the metallic, they are very metallic -y, these. I've got some other acrylic paints that are metallic, but they are not as, as metallic as that. And these, these are pure metallic. These are lovely. And this is what I put into that spray that I showed you, that I sprayed here. They are very, very, very metallic-y. I need to mix it up a bit, but you can see what I'm talking about. Next, I have paints that you rub in. So, a rub and buff. Um, this one is a wax metallic finish but this is basically the same as the Sinker Gold which is again by Viva Decor which is again very very thick basically oh come on what they are is really thick 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 paints that you get on your finger and you rub in to something and with this one the more that you rub the shinier it becomes and it becomes more and more metallic so these are what you use for highlight, basically like you would distress stains, uh, distress inks, sorry. 
um, you know, as you go around the edges and things with the ink pads, the, these are kind of the same. Where you'd want highlights, you don't put it all over the page. You just put a little bit on your finger, and then you just put it over the edges that are going to be highlighted. Um, and now finally is um, distress stains. I don't know why I'm adding them into this section. It's just basically a particular kind of use that you might have them for. I don't use these a hell of a lot. I mean, you can't really even see that. That just makes the page. It's antique linen colour, so it just makes the page kind of like it's been tea stained. So walnut stain. They're just kind of good for giving block block colours down, which you can then layer up. Finally, just because again, it won't go in any of the other sections. Speciality things are these gem gels. Um, again, this is Imagination Crafts, which is a British brand, and when I did a blog post, not many of my American friends knew what these were. What they are is um, kind of like a glaze. Oh, trust that one's not be working right. Okay, so they're kind of like a glaze that dries like a really, really shiny, raised up, kind of like... Um, let me show you the artwork that I've done with it. I don't know if you can see that. All this is gem gels. And down where her dress is, all this is gem gels as well. So what I'm going to do, and all these dots around the heart, so gem gels, what I'm going to do in the future is um, how to make your own gem gels because I know a lot of people, like I say, in America can't get hold of them. So I'll do a video as to how to make them soon. <laughs> If you guys have any questions, you know you can always just leave me a comment and I'll try and get back to you. And I hope I've explained a few things to you. If I haven't, again, ask me a question. But um, I've tried to keep this video as short as I can, but it's obviously not going to work. It's going to be quite a long one. But I hope I've taught you something. Anyway, see you later. Bye.